GM, GM, Rainmakers fans, welcome to another edition of Make It Rain, presented by Metaverse HQ. We are coming off a fresh three-game Thanksgiving slate. Got a lot of talk about there as we digest our turkey from yesterday's uh, dinner and festivities. And we'll also take a look back at last week's slate and look forward and find some edges for this upcoming Week 12 NFL slate. Let's get it. Gentlemen, how you doing today? Welcome. I know a little slow morning this morning. We're, we're inhaling some coffee and, and, and peeling ourselves off the bed, but feeling pretty good. Um, yeah. How's everyone doing? Yeah. Sucking it down. Sucking <laughs> it down. Yeah. yeah. Um, quite the game last night. I think no one expected that to shoot out, but uh, no. Kirk Cousins, super powered on Thanksgiving. What can I say? I mean, just uh, loves himself some turkey and just putting up points on Thanksgiving. Just. Mac Jones also had 20 plus, so 26, I think. And so it really broke some of the optimal lineups from the early slate. So uh, kind of a nice surprise there. Derek, you, uh, you cashed in nice on that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I decided to, you know, uh, be lazy and put the optimal in. And of course, that hits really big. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, every every line that, you know, I'm, painstakingly okay i'm gonna make this correlation that correlation nah nah it didn't matter the, put the optimal in yeah <laughs> <laughs> funny how that works it was at least nice to see uh you know that late hammer go off a little bit with with mac yeah. jones actually playing pretty well and uh kurt cousins so provided a little parody little other options um for people to win it all in the in the main slate um me personally, I actually went pretty hard on the on the holiday slate, um, and it did not work out. But <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot, so that's you know what what you lose in money, you gain in knowledge, right? Yeah, that's right. It. That's right. That's how I'm <laughs> mm-hmm. Mark that one down. Duly <laughs> noted there. But uh, you know, we see again, like uh, you know, if there's a superstar that you're playing um, in the early games, like there's just leverage uh, superstar. Uh, versus superstar, right? Because for Jefferson plus a QB to go off and win you um, or beat the early slate, you needed just 50 points, I think, or 52 points. You had to beat Allen plus McKenzie um, or Allen plus Diggs. So, mm-hmm. you know, clearly in the late slate, we saw that with, you know, Mac Jones plus Jefferson hitting 60 and Cousins plus Jones hitting, or, sorry, Cousins plus Jefferson hitting um, 58 or 56. Really good seeing the, the late game go off, just provide a little bit of a extended action, I think. Also because I think a lot of us just thought that one didn't have the legs to it, um, at least on the front end. So to see that game go off towards the end of the night was a welcome surprise for sure. Um, I don't think we had any crazy sweats in the Millie, at least. Um, but I think we had, some of us had some live live action and uh, you know just the way the cookie crumbles uh, along the way, especially in chat and MVHQ, I think we had... Um, you know, some some live lineups into into the last game there. So mm-hmm. again, that's all we can really ask for. Um, but a fun experience nonetheless. You know, it was good to kind of get some additional fantasy action in on Thanksgiving Day. And that's always a crowd pleaser. So uh, we'll, we'll take it. We'll learn from it, and we'll move on and look forward to the uh, the holiday slate um, mm-hmm. upcoming here. Um, you know, it does seem like it was. Months and months ago, but really week 11 was just last week, you know, and so, um, you know, we can quickly, we can quickly take just a quick look back, um, and see what we learned from, I know all of, um, you know, JJ, Jake and Derek, you guys all had some real live lineups last week and just kind of want to generally discuss maybe some talking points and, and things we learned from even last week's slate and, uh, we don't have to individually go through lineup by lineup, but just kind of, you know, maybe we can discuss exactly what we took from last week's experience and some of the sweats we had. Jake, did you want to go ahead and take the lead there? Yeah, for sure. I actually am going to show my lineup real quick. This will help me Perfect. illustrate uh, awesome. what I'm talking about here. But so I had I had a pretty good sweat um, going into the second half of things last week in the in the elite 100, 100K to first uh, prize pool. I ended up taking 13th here. Um, so... A lot of what my strategy has been, um, similar to the other hosts here, strategy is you know taking shots on guys in the early games, um, and then and then from there you know allocating whatever your best late players are um, into whatever those whatever lineups ended up doing good in the ones that you took shots in. So for this one, I actually had 
a pretty weird random combo of just Daniel Jones not stacked with anyone um, and Olave in the first half of games. Um, and they both did really well, thankfully. Dan- Daniel Jones, 29 points, um, Olave, 24 here. Um, so then I had a decision point, uh, you know, for the second half of games. Um, I had Higgins in there. I knew I wanted to play T Higgins with that rare. And I knew I wanted to play Devonta Adams there with that superstar. Cause I couldn't really put him in any other lineups cause I had other superstars. Um, so then it just, the decision point came down to running back and I actually didn't own a running back to put in here. So I looked at the available running backs. Um, and it was really just, it was Delvin Cook, it was Tony Pollard, it was Joe Mixon, and it was Josh Jacobs. I wasn't going to do Joe Mix- Mixon or Jacobs because I already had Higgins and Adams on the same team. So it was basically a 50-50 decision between Dalvin and Pollard. Pollard was like $300 less. But Dalvin projected for a few more points, and I chose to go Dalvin. Um, and it cost me 100 k because <laughs> if I would have went Pollard, I would have won the 100 k um, so that's pretty tough, pretty tough to lose on a 50, 50 decision. Um, still won money. So it was a decent week at least. Um, but it's just, it kind of just goes to show you at least I feel, I feel like the process was there still. Um, you know, I was kicking myself for not going Pollard, but at the end of the day, you know, I can't really predict what's going to happen. I think basically <laughs> I had the same issue two weeks ago where I, I think it was, uh, t- talking with, with JJ, it was a decision between, um, who was it? It was Aaron Jones, uh, Tony Pollard, and uh, Jonathan Taylor. And I think Taylor put up five right. more points, and I would have won five thousand dollars instead of two hundred. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it it's just Josh when they, Jacobs also, and or Josh Jacobs, yeah. The other the other two options would have got you there, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just one of those things when they project so well, and you know, there's not really a true ownership discrepancy unless it's Stephon mm-hmm. Diggs or something like that. You're really going to see like five percent ownership, and you can't really tell what people have. Um, just uh, if the optimal is not hitting, you have no idea what people have, and so it's just kind of like a go with your gut coin flip, like what you think it's going to be. And as long as the projections line up, you can't really be mad at yourself. I will say, yeah, um, you know, as long as you put yourself in position, like that's yeah. all we can hope for. But if you click up one ahead, of you, Jake, <laughs> yep. you know, this is look at this guy. This, this guy who scored higher than you. <laughs> um, I will be kicking, kicking myself for this one this week because, uh, you know, this one I just clearly made a mistake, right? And um, there was lots of late swaps, had 10 late swaps going. Um, it was all sorts of hectic and just um, forgot to put a superstar in my best lineup, right? Um, obviously, you know, I, I actually was pretty lucky to land on Pollard here, um, you know, as I was – making my lineups, he was actually the fourth running back that I liked. So, you know, I had Jacobs and Cook stacked somewhere else and then Mixon in a different lineup. And so those ones I just felt like had a higher chance to surpass this one. And so um, put Pollard here, was lucky to end up there. But, man, Higgins was clearly a mistake because um, I had Devontae and I put him in a lower scoring uh, lineup with two to flex, uh, flex and running back player. So just wish there was like some indicator that there's a superstar here, but something that I'm going to just try to work back and um, keep better track of. Because if I put Devonta here, I would have got third place. So it uh, also cost me a nice amount of money there. But, you know, at the end of the day, still still cashed. So it was a good score. Speaking really quick, speaking of third place, I'm just flipping mm-hmm. through the top lineups in the rare. Third place had Samaje Piran in their lineup. How the hell did they know that was going to happen? <laughs> wow, it's I, we were talking. I was talking to Jake about this. I mean, there's some sometimes like you feel like you know I label my late swaps like X, Y, and Z, right? X is like I'll put optimal into Y is like I'll put some sneaky ones in Z. I'll just put like fucking hail marys, right? Like let, let me just cash, right? Like give, bring me over the cash line. And sometimes you put those backup running backs and they. Just, explode so uh i think that's probably what happened they probably just wanted a cash <laughs> like keep a keep above the cash line and then that's, they just that's exploded honestly this looks like a min cash line of it's daniel jones josh jacobs amari cooper chris olave and samaj p ryan and no correlation whatsoever um <laughs> it looks like someone just was like i got these cards and i'm just going to throw them in and hope for a min cash and they get third place for three thousand bucks it's amazing <laughs> it's amazing yeah, you never know. You never know. 
Well, never- uh, I was going to say, I've seen, I've seen some of the top pros, and that's something like we can talk as an overall meta thing. I've seen some of the top pros because you'll get guys like Samaj P. Ryan or Daniel Jones will have a 30 point game or something like that. I've seen um, several of the, the top players make lines that you're like, this doesn't cast 75% of the time, but if it goes off, you're probably scoring extremely high because it doesn't have any of the chalk pieces, but it, it has good players, but it just doesn't have any of the chalk pieces and any of the highly projected ones. So yep. like rather than just what I've been doing in the past, which was just throwing that in the cash lineup. Cause I'm like, Oh yeah, this will easily get me 60, 70 points, but it has such a low chance of one fifty. Um, I've seen some of the the sharps actually uh, do that, and just uh, in the you know one one time all season that it does hit, it's going to hit for a lot of money, and it also costs them probably half as much as all these other top lines. Like you know, building building a Daniel Jones or a Trevor Lawrence line uh, stack or whatever is going to cost you half as much as it is building a Josh Allen. So yeah, and I think um, it goes to your point there, Rick, right earlier in the season. Um, the bankroll booster cash line and like the fiat contest cash line are not crazy different, right? Um, only a couple of points maybe. And, you know, the upside yeah. from putting it into that main contest is just way more than uh, just a flat payout from the bankroll booster. So um, totally, totally see why they do that. And kind of goes into our late swap strategy, right? Um, where, you know, we, we buy a lot of dead players to swap out, but sometimes it's just better to pay up a little bit more for, um, a player that can actually score points, right? Because you never know um, what can happen. Real quick aside on uh, what you just brought up, JJ, with the contest selection between the bankroll bo- booster. Um, I personally like never. I don't know if I've ever played the bankroll booster just because of the lack of upside and like because, like you said, you never really know. But I'm curious if you guys do and like in what situations you would you would choose to do the bankroll booster instead of playing like the main tourney. I I started doing it early um earlier in the season as an experiment like I bought 20 of the same players um for for the five spots and did pretty well with that but in each of those like I would have been better off placing it in the main contest right because the cash line wasn't um crazy high and then there was one week I think I scored 100 from that cash lineup yeah. right which was what what it gave me a lot more money from the main contest 20 times right so it's like um <laughs> I, I don't think there's ever a scenario. Maybe if you play, maybe if you play a defense and you just wanted to take a shot, right? Like you had leftover defense from showdown um, lineups or like a leftover kicker, and you're like, eh, maybe I'll kick, maybe I'll just min cash with this. But even then, you know, we've seen Tyler Bass score 23 points <laughs> at the <laughs> kicker position. So still. Um, still, like, why why play this bankroll booster? I don't know. Yeah, that's basically. Uh, the reason I could see it is if you're just buying a bunch of as cheap cards as you can, um, playing defenses, I, I always did the experiment and playing one or two tight ends in the lineups because I know that they're not going to go off for 30, but they'll get me, uh, on the high end 15, 20 points. I've had, I've had lineups like Trevor Lawrence lineups that have just gone in, uh, and to the cash line. Cause I figure, Oh, you know, Trevor Lawrence. Um, I'll just throw a tight end that that I don't like, and then uh, it'll be like Cole Komet puts up twenty, Trevor Lawrence puts up thirty, and everything like that. And uh, I probably should have played this in the the tournament. Yeah, I'll say probably I take it back. It makes sense maybe at legendary and rainmaker tier where there's less entries, right? Because yeah. then then the cash line probably separates a lot more. But in the elite yeah. and lower, like there's way too many players. I think in the elite cash contest you get three hundred people plus. Right. And then rare way more than that. So um doesn't really make sense at that point. The the only thing I've seen is that people throw their worst lineups in there. And so if you're just looking like to if you're not worried about like uh hitting ten thousand dollars or whatever, if you're just looking to pay off your uh your cards halfway through the season, uh then it's a good place to do it, especially if you're building those cheaper lines. Uh just because like usually it's there's I mean there's a lot more lines than there is payout prizes, but at least a third of those are people throwing in injured players and just praying for a min cash. Something I was thinking about just as as I'm watching myself try to catch back up to what I put in on Rainmakers, um, that I wonder what do you guys think for next season is just paying for those lower tier quarterbacks that have much less chance of ever winning. Uh 
uh, a takedown or anything like that, but will cat will basically pay themselves off a lot quicker. Like building a uh, a Daniel Jones uh, line or a um, you know a Jared Goff line or something like that at the beginning of the season. It's only going to cost like let's say a, a rare line. It's only going to cost you like 150 bucks to build build five cars of that caliber, and you probably have one chance, maybe two all season for that to actually go off. But yeah. it's going to cash enough consistently that you've paid off the cards halfway through the season. Whereas if you uh, build a five hundred dollar, uh, um, what do you call it, Josh Allen line, you have to you have to. Uh, uh, pay it off like you have to hit twice as much and i'm wondering what the probability if the probability of hitting those higher price cards isn't worth the extra amount of money uh yeah. just just to just for the win equity i'll say um that's kind of the reason why i did the bankroll experiment in the first place right just kind of see if i could pay it off over time but it ended up paying itself off because you sell into showdown games right and I think that's the better way to do it is you kind of just rent players and then um, gotcha. put them into those contests. Otherwise, like, cause if you do that strategy, you, what you expose yourself to is injury, right? Um, it's a very high chance. You're not going to have that same lineup, um, you know, 12 weeks after, um, you know, if, if you're trying to pay it off, like let's say in 12 weeks, there's a high chance you're not going to have the same lineup uh, 12 weeks from now, you know, that, that you started with. All right, gentlemen, that was fantastic stuff. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and move into our marketplace segment here. Uh, every week, we like to take a look at the marketplace and see the weekly gainers and losers across all rarity tiers uh, of um, Rainmakers here. JJ, did you want to go ahead and, and talk us through what you're seeing? Yeah, thanks, Boop. Uh, same thing that highlights uh, most weeks is injuries, right, or bench bench situations. You see Kyle Allen and Mike White uh, jump up for quarterback, especially at Elite year uh where it's the most expensive um that we track uh just because you know they're going to be getting the starting jobs or likely getting the starting jobs this week and uh you know it's going to be cool to see um someone else play rather than zach wilson and um uh the davis mills <laughs> from the Texans. so we'll see we'll see if that improves anything it's hard to say that it doesn't right just because of how bad it's been but hey yeah. we've seen nathan peterman start and we saw that legendary five interception game so uh <laughs> you know there, there is worse there's definitely worse things out there and then we also see sam and jp ryan jump up to the top had a monster monster game this week uh so, and um in joe mixon's absence so um if you if joe mixon sits we can kind of see that uh pump up even more probably um and other than that you know we see justin fields kind of retracing a bit just because uh, like you had identified, he's probably overvalued last week. Um, had a little bit of a letdown game against the Falcons, right? 20, 23 points from fields or so is a letdown game because uh, he had 40, 40, 40, <laughs> something like that in the weeks prior. So uh, kind of seeing that uh, retrace there, um, as well as uh, a lot of the superstars kind of contracting in value. You have Saquon, Jalen Hurts, um, um, Christian McCaffrey uh, going down as well in, in value, as well as non-superstars like cd lamb brian robinson jamar chase um going up and i think you had identified jamar chase as well poop is one that you should probably look at just because um he kind of fits that cd lamb um best chess piece kind of role um and stefan diggs is also out of this slate so um probably a good one to to be able to move around um in your lineups this week um Going into the marketplace snapshot, uh, we see the continued bleed across the board, though I think that more of this was because of their decision to include um, all of the cards into the holiday packs, right? Um, so just we saw markets tank <laughs> for the floors of these um, where they weren't uh, either a sweater or a flannel card. The holiday card is probably now the cheapest on the market. We usually track the momentum floors just because those are the cheapest, but um, those in holiday kind of waffle back and forth just because um, those are the ones where people are ripping them and um, probably having nothing to do with them if they um, want to list them. So uh, you see the good players as a whole just holding up their own. Um, it's really not, it's really a tale of like who is a good matchup and who is a good player. Um, you know, whereas earlier in the season we saw a lot of the injury situations kind of pop up these players to the top of the charts. But, uh, you know, C.D. Lamb, A.J. Brown, Amon Ra, Gino, Justin Jefferson, Tua, Mahomes, Kelsey, Diggs, and Allen just 
kind of lighting up the charts there in Elite, as well as uh, a little bit below that in Elite is Walker and Waddle uh, as well. So not much really to write home about in terms of that this, this week, except that uh, the floor continues to fall out. And, you know, something to watch is um, we after week 14 is when we'll get the 50% off momentum packs. And I expect these to drop a lot further. Um, but the but the core pl- expensive players will probably stay around the same. Yeah, all good stuff there. A- a- any week we can uh, get some Mike White action. I- I'm all in favor of it, right? I mean, that's always a, a crowd pleaser there. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. But uh, in the nature of the game, right? Uh-huh. It's just it's, it's playing these week to week with the injuries and, you know, uh, benchings and, and so on and so forth. You know, probably not, probably not going to hit from a projection standpoint, but, you know, some, maybe some value to be had there for some marketplace flips along the way. Joe Flacco snub, man. He's elite. He won a Super man, Bowl. Come on. Right? What's going Play the on man. There? Play the man. I'm uh I'm with you there. You know, we'll see what Mike White has left in the tank. But you know, I thought that offense was at least you know sustaining pretty well early on with, with Flacco in the fold. They were. Obviously so, yeah, you know, so yeah. at least the, the the young receivers were getting their looks and, and you know it was kind of moving moving right along there. But mm-hmm. there there must be something going on behind the scenes, maybe. Flacco wants to be more retired than playing. You know, maybe that early season run made him realize that uh, his arm doesn't yeah. recover like it used to. You know, something like that. So. Yeah, I think it's because he went one and two, and his both losses were against divisional opponents. I bet yeah. that's probably, but probably has to play into it. Sure, but yeah, they'll absolutely. they'll they'll realize the mistake. I would say after a couple games. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. I would hope so. Good stuff. Did, did you guys, uh, uh, JJ, did you have any uh, overpriced, underpriced, uh, or? Overvalued, undervalued players that you had your eye on? Yeah, I think um, in terms of undervalued, right? Um, I just picked up an Olave two fifty. I just think that's way too cheap for the role that he's getting there. Um, as well as I'm looking at Tyler Lockett, right? One fifty for an elite. I mean, he's going to be in the playoffs uh, almost sh- assuredly. Um, Metcalf is around that two fifty range as well. Uh, so a lot of these guys um, just not getting the respect that I get that people probably script this out that Kenneth Walker is going to get all the touches, but you know, they're going to throw the ball, you know, 30, 40 times a game. So um, probably going to see some, some, one of these receivers get a good score against the Raiders. Yeah. I I think it's just a, you know, a personal bias against Tyler Lockett too. That's like, Oh, he can't have a ceiling game, even though I don't, I don't think uh, DK Metcalf has scored higher than him all season. Uh, as far as like, I think DK Metcalf's ceiling has been lower than Tyler Lockett's this season. So, and um, as far as overpriced, like I'd probably say that um, Geno Smith is getting in that range, right, five hundred bucks. Um, although that's you know again a, a super a solid matchup um, that they have, but again, kind of. Hitting that supply crunch in in that Geno Smith had, I guess, a lot mm-hmm. of unreleased card cards. That's why I don't get. Sorry, a little rant. That's why I don't get why they haven't released like the uh, um, the Jimmy Garoppolo, the Geno Smith cards. They're throwing out stupid third string wide receivers that will never see any playing time instead of releasing more Jimmy Garoppolo's so that, uh, or Geno Smith so that they're not so completely overpriced and you can't buy one. It's weird because, you know, they put Hopkins on the waiver wire, right? And he had about the same amount of cards released. So I don't see why they um, why they wouldn't put this kind of player, these kind of players in the waiver as well. It's just incredibly annoying, especially if you're playing showdown with like San Francisco. It's like, well, I can't buy Jimmy Garoppolo because I'm not paying 150 for a, a showdown <laughs> slate card. Yeah, and he was the nuts <laughs> this past <Yeah>. week. <laughs> But yeah, um, th- those are kind of my overpriced and underpriced and uh, short, shorter than usual. Theric rant. I kind of wanted to hear you go off. Uh, how do you feel about Lat Murray okay. at 140 bucks in the lead? <laughs> I mean, you can you can just give me the 140 bucks and I'll be perfectly <laughs> happy with it. You know, if you're gonna throw money away, I'll take it. But uh, yeah, good God, like. You know, Rainmakers, it's not, oh, Latavius Murray's $3,000 and I can jam him in as a, a minimum price running back that regular DFS is. Do you think that he's scoring 30 points and I have a, a bridge to sell you? Like, like, there is no chance in hell that on the lowest total game in one of the worst offenses, if not the worst offense in the NFL, that this guy is going to go off and be one of the highest, uh, uh, highest running backs on the slate. Maybe. 
maybe one out of 10,000 times, but it's definitely not worth $150 to find out. And no one's going to play them either. Like no one uh, is going to be playing them. And I guess you could say, oh, that's that's really sneaky. Yeah, so it's playing Alameda Zacchaeus um, <laughs> every slate. And guess what? His, his moments are still $1. So. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if they... I, I shoot. I, I think they picked up Marlon Mack recently, right? I mean, the, you know, he's not going to get the, the they, full load, I would hope. You know, like, I don't know. He, he, I wouldn't put anything past that coaching staff, but... Jesus. They don't, like, even when Javante Williams was healthy, they weren't running him out as a bell cow. They were sticking in freaking Mike Boone for some reason. Yeah. Like, like they're not going to give, Latavius Murray isn't going to be the bell cow running back maybe five years ago, ten years ago, but, like, not, not today. So I don't know what people are doing even paying for him. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure they'll elevate someone from the practice squad as well. Um, Big Jake, anyone you've had your eyes on? Yeah, yeah. Um... I'll start with overpriced here. Um, I think Cordell Patterson is uh, is too expensive right now. I was I was shocked when I saw how high his cards were. It was five dollars for a core, twenty two for a rare, and almost two hundred for an elite <coughs> um, Cordell Patterson. He's now two games back from his. He's played two games um, since he got injured, and it looks like it's a split backfield there now. I mean, he had the he had the obviously uh, uh, awesome touchdown run um, or as a kick returner. Um, but you know, that's not something you can count on every, uh, every week. And right now we split in that backfield with Tyler Algier, their, uh, rookie running back. It looks like they want to get him involved and see what he's got. And he's looked decent. Um, so he'll, they'll probably keep going with that split, um, as a, as a five and 16, you know, who knows if they make the playoffs, probably not. So, um, I think he's, I think he's a little too expensive. And if I had him, I'd probably, I'd probably ship him out. Um, because I, I don't anticipate him really dominating that workload um, for the rest of the year. Um, and then on the other side, the underpriced, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go again with the rookie uh, George Pickens. He's uh, he's got some good prices out there: three dollars for a core, fifteen for a rare, and one hundred and fifteen for elite. Um, George Pickens is looking nice. I mean, his last game, he almost had a huge game. He went, uh, I think he had like eighty yards receiving and a touchdown. Um, and he actually also dropped like a, I don't know if it was a drop, but it was a close play. It was a tough play, but uh, it was like another 50 yard touchdown as well. If he would have caught that, then I'm sure this price would have been <clears throat> a lot higher. And I mean, this guy's an elite talent. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's got high draft capital um, and you want to bet on these rookies wide receivers in the second half of the year, um, you know, as they continue to get, uh, you know, Integrated in the offense, um, used to the NFL, um, and he's kind of paired with another rookie quarterback who's also um, taking some nice steps. I'd say I w I'm not going to call Kenny Pickett good yet, but he is all right at least, and he's he is shown that he's willing to sling it a little bit, um, and that's what we want out of, the, out of your fantasy quarterback. So um, yeah, I like I like where Pickett is at right here. You know, he's got some nice upside in the rest of the year. Um, and he doesn't have any buys left. Like Steelers aren't going to make the playoffs, but you will have him for the rest of the regular season and no buys. And he's got some pretty decent matchups as well. So love those calls. Love those takes, everyone. Uh, a couple names I'll throw out here. Um, all undervalued, in my opinion. But I think Amari um, has some room to grow here with um, with Deshaun coming back uh, soon. I think Amari has already established that he is still a true alpha receiver. Uh, even in this Cleveland Browns offense, uh, he's been a target hog. Obviously, you're going to have to ride the roller coaster week to week with him just a little bit, but I, I do think that firms up with Deshaun back in the fold here soon enough. Uh, six bucks in core, 19 rare, 340 in elite. Some of that might already be priced in, but hopefully, uh, I, I do think he's going to have some more boom games in his portfolio here, um, down the stretch. Uh, to Jake's point, the rookie receivers, Traylon, uh, I'll piggyback right off of uh, last week's um, performance, uh, finally breaking the 100-yard the mark. Traylon is another young stud rookie wide receiver. That offense is still going to roll right through Derrick Henry, as we know, but uh, he will be the target hog moving forward here. 220 in core, 12 rare, 120 in elite. I think there's a lot of value to be had there as well. Um, 
last one I'll throw out there is Mike Evans. I think I think I'm I'm a glutton for punishment. I will go back to the well on this Bucks offense. Um, and obviously with Evans, you get a lot of that touchdown equity. Right now, he's six bucks in core, twenty seven rare, two eighty nine in elite. Um, any given week, he is a, a a bet to score a touchdown or two. Uh, and be the wide receiver one at the end of the day. So um, I will place a bet on Mike Evans as well here as we move into the end of the season. Um, good stuff. Good stuff, gentlemen. Um, we can move right into our favorite stacks of the week. Um, just quickly glance at the slate. Uh, I think we were discussing a little bit pre-show just how a lot of the, 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 the sexy matchups this week line up in the afternoon, um, the afternoon slate and uh leads to a lot of attractive late swap options obviously uh, i think a lot of our core plays are going to be coming from this afternoon spot uh, all the high total games are, are are there as well so um jake did you uh want to go ahead and lead us into your favorite stacks this week and what you've been looking at we got the game totals here um to kind of identify spots to attack here uh from a stacking perspective <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna defer this week and not go for the highest totaled game and let one of you, let one of you guys go for it because <laughs> I feel bad taking it every week. Um, but I'm actually gonna go for um, the team with one of the highest point totals, and that's the Miami Dolphins here in the early window. Um, you know, we've we've seen this offense like we've seen Tua and you know Tyreek Waddle um you know they won a couple slates for people um so far this year and now they got a great matchup against the Texans um you know they have a very high uh pass rate uh over expectation as well so while we do um expect them to lead as you can see they're a 14 point favorite here um on the top um you know despite that i think uh you know i think they'll continue to uh you know, put on the gas here. And I think they could come out to a, a really early, uh, you know, lead and have an efficient day on the passing game. So if you want to go to a Tyreek, to a Waddle, um, you know, I think both are definitely in play if you want to double stack them as well. It's probably a game where I wouldn't, um, I say, I say usually I think you can double stack them, but because of the fact that it is, um, you know, there might not be a lot of competition on the other, other side from the Texans, um, I might just go, I might lean um, a single stack here instead of the double stack like usual um, for the Dolphins. Um, but um, I do think the double stack's viable as well. And, you know, we just we just see these wide receivers really blowing up in such a concentrated offense there over at the, over on the Dolphins. Um, so, yeah, that's my favorite of the week. Awesome. I love that call. Yeah, we've seen them break a couple slates already this year. Don't see any reason why they can't this week. JJ, did you have any thoughts there? Yeah. Um it's it's a weird weird week. Um, I'm gonna go with one kind of under the radar. I think is Ravens Jags. I kind of like that one for a stack. I think Lamar maybe gets it right this week. Um, just seeing teams put up a lot of points in the Jags. Just I don't know. Just got a sneaky feeling about that one. Otherwise, like that. it would probably be. <laughs> otherwise, I'd probably be looking at the Browns Bucks. But there's you know weather concerns like it's raining or whatever. So. Um, I think that one is also a good one that I, I want to look at for possible game stacks. Just keep it kind of contained. I don't I don't want pieces elsewhere. Just, um, you know, all, all of it in one game. It makes sense to me. Yeah, I think those are good thoughts there. Theric, did you have your eye on anything? Uh, probably uh, Geno Smith with the Seahawks stack. Uh, everybody's going to be on Kenneth Walker. Uh, but I believe last week he actually played in the receiving game he actually caught uh some passes which was which is part of the reason why he's uh so highly projected uh they he's got Lockett he's got DK Metcalf and they're playing against the Raiders which is just a god awful defense and so uh I am not not really afraid of <laughs> of anything from the Raiders yeah uh and then if you did want to do a bring back you have elite options in Devonte Adams and, and Josh Jacobs um, since it's such a concentrated offense. So it'd be a pretty easy game stack. The, uh, I think the uh, totals like 47 and a half and um, the game's supposed to be close. So it should be interesting to see, but that would, that would be my, I think a lot of people are going to go for the chiefs just because it's EV. You know, a lot of people with uh, Jamar chase are going to go to the Bengals uh, and, and things like that. But Gino uh, has, has a pretty good floor and a, a pretty good chance at a ceiling game if the Raiders can do anything. So, 
I like it. I like it. Yeah, there's like, I, of course the the Niners are, are appealing here. So are the Chiefs, right? Uh, in the higher total games uh, in the afternoon slate, the, the Niners are just so sexy across the board. But you kind of get the, they're not necessarily a lot of playmakers across the board, but none of them are a funnel, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you really kind of have to guess week to week. So you can definitely make a case uh, d- to the play a variety of Niners. I don't think you're stacking Garoppolo or anything like that, but. Um, individual pieces from that game or maybe some mini stacks some skinny stacks uh will, will go a long way as well so that's kind of where my eyes are looking but it's going to be kind of um you know you're gonna have to decide between you know Ayuk and, and debo and kittle and you know even cmc with with a, a a lesser workload than we're used to seeing from him especially from that superstar spot so you're gonna have to make some gut calls there but there will be points scored there against that new orleans offense and i think JJ's point, Olave is, is very underpriced right now for the role he has in that Saints offense. So it's a very easy bring back as well. Wow. Uh, I was expecting uh, some Chargers or Cardinals call, but no one, no one went for it. I left it open for you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be nice, and you guys didn't wow. even take it. If you ask me, if you ask me tomorrow afternoon or even Sunday morning, I'd be able to give you better. There's a lot of we don't know who's going to play and who's not in that game. So I want to. I want to know is Kyler going to play? Uh, it sounds like Keenan Allen's going to play, but Mike Williams isn't. Uh, I think Kyler but, for sure is going to play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Keenan yeah, Allen he's will play for now. Yeah. Keenan Allen will play for you know two snaps and then walk off and we'll never see him again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, right. is, there's yeah. a lot of injury uh, question marks over there. I think even yeah. Everett is is questionable like Lundell too. Like and Marquise Brown as well. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, Marquise is like fifty fifty on whether he plays. Some sites have him in, some sites don't. And so it's just like, tell me who's playing in that game. That way, I can actually right. decide what to do. If everybody plays, wonderful. It's going to be an amazing shootout of it. Well, I don't know. Cardinals can never make a shootout, but uh, <laughs> as much of a shootout as as it can be, but. Yeah, I, I just need some more injury clarity before I tell people to get on that game. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what kept me from it too. But yeah, obviously, when when the stars align there, uh, points will be put up for sure. So I like the shout out for sure. Just uh, yeah, <laughs> let's clear up the mud there a little bit. Um, awesome stuff. So as we kind of talked about loosely, the afternoon slate does set up well here. JJ, did you want to maybe? Loosely touch on some of your late swap strategy here and, and maybe some spots you're looking at to to get into, uh, depending on how the, the early slate shakes out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start off with a bunch of kind of stacks at quarterback because a lot of the superstar quarterbacks are um, on the early slate, like you got Burrow and uh, Jackson, uh, and, and kind of have um, a, late straps, a late swap strategy with that because there's a lot of good running backs in the later games. Um you know, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start probably with a bunch of one one stacks, um, like just QB plus wide receiver or QB plus tight end stacks there. Um, then take some shots um, with running backs on the early slates as well, um, and swap into some of these players uh, just to kind of fill out the pieces there. So like, kind of want to build a core that that fits around like the Lockett stack, like Derek mentioned. Kind of want to build one that that builds around um, Mahomes uh, as well, and then. Also the flip side, right? Because we, we got like most, um, I think that is not playing um, for for the Dolphins, right? So I, I kind of want to see if um, Jeff Wilson pops off and then kind of slot slot those things around them. Um, it's against the Houston run defense, so he has exactly. a very good chance. Yeah. yeah, and then it's really tricky this week with superstars, right? Because you got a lot of them. Um, a lot of the skill position players are in the late games, right? You have Eckler, you have Devante, you have um, McCaffrey. Um, just to, just to name those, and y- you know, uh, in the early one, you only have Henry uh, paired with a bunch of quarterbacks. So, um, gonna have lineups where it makes sense. Like, I'll, I'll have Henry probably in my in my um, Brady stack there, just so that like I can swap. Um, if if both of those pieces pop off, I can swap into the later game. Sorry, I meant Chubb. <laughs> Sorry, I meant Chubb. Um, I can swap into the later game. Um, for some of these um, non superstars. Um, but really, it's a tale of superstars, I think, this week, right? Um, you you want to get exposure to the one that really pops off. And I think it's going to be in the late s- slate. So um, trying to kind of fill in pieces from the earlier that can slot well with those. I know that was a lot of word soup, but uh, it, it is trickier than most weeks, I think, for, for the late swap this week. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the JJ yeah. word soup. 
what about what you, Jake? Because <laughs> I know um, you're setting up these scenarios as well. Um, I thought it was interesting. You did, um, you know, the Daniel Jones Alave one last week. Because, um, you know, I think last week we, we thought, um, like, it, it was probably a good week to have two in the early and three in the late. Whereas usually we do, like, three early, two right. late, or even four early, one late. But uh, this, this kind of sets up the same, I think. Even one early, four late this week could, could be in play. Yeah, I'm in agreement. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a similar strategy as well. Um, I like, I really like taking shots on like these lower, um, you know, some lower cost guys who are still good players. Like Eric touched on it earlier. Um, um, actually, I don't know if we were recording the, that part that, we, that he was talking about um, in terms of the, you know, the lower price like quarterback stacks if that was mm-hmm. viable um, or not. But like I like I like taking shots on um you know some of these games. I think I'm gonna roll out like a Russ Wilson Portland Sutton stack this week. Um and j- just like these uh these low there's lower cost, but maybe they have a good game. Um and if not, then just replace them with a bunch of duds uh in that late slate. Yeah. Um but yeah, like Garrett Wilson is another guy, you know, with maybe White Mike White's there, um, you know, taking I have a couple of his cards, so just throwing, like, just pairing together, like, if there's any correlation there in the early games, um, or if not, I like, I like just throwing in like a couple guys um, in one lineup that are good, but not like maybe they're not great, um, and you just and you just go for it all. Um, and if they have a good game, then you can you can uh, pair them up with these other, you know, these other uh, late game hammers, and it's usually going to be like a lower owned type lineup. Um, you know, not maybe not in like total ownership, but in terms of like who is paired with one another, like a lot of people aren't going to have like, you know, like a lot of people aren't going to have that that type of combination because um, they're they're just playing the pure like highest projected. So I think it's a way to get different in these contests, especially um, you know in in like core and rare and stuff when these contests are such a large, huge, uh, huge field. And so it's a really good way to get different. Um, on the on the field um in terms of like ownership not cumulative ownership but in terms of correlation uh within your lineup so yeah really like taking those shots early yeah i agree with that um that's why like last week i had like um you know williams with (laughs) donovan people jones and um that right like sometimes Mm -hmm. it just takes weird pairing to pop off and then um you know you have leverage over everyone else because no one or very few people have that um, with the right pieces. Good stuff, fellas. Uh, all very important points. Again, we keep emphasizing late swap and how important it is and a big part of, of, of your strategy here um, for success. And and I think the more we can kind of relay that information out to the public, uh, the better off everyone will be in, in terms of how they approach their slates week to week. Thank you very much, fellas. Um, Give it to us, Derek. What's on your mind? What do you What do you uh, think? I was just there, thinking, but... like, like who, who's y'all's most like, like you can't stand it when you see they're doing well player in the NFL. Mine's Jamal Williams. Whenever I see him go <laughs> off for twenty, it's just like I f- hate this guy so much. Yeah. He's get, getting there, and it's like he he's freaking Derek Henry or Nick Chubb, but like worse than them, where he doesn't catch a single pass, but because they give him all the freaking goal line touches, he gets three touchdowns. I'm I'm just looking at last week's thing where it's just like, and he almost did it. He almost did it in the the Thanksgiving slate where it's just like, oh God, not again. He's going to be the freaking top uh, top running back in Thanksgiving too because you're going to give him all the freaking goal line touches, even though Swift gets a touchdown every time that that he's given the ball enough. So, <laughs> like, I don't know. He's like unnecessarily tilts me for for no reason other than like he is a terrible play in DraftKings, but he s- keeps getting there. Oh. Yeah, I don't know that I have any like that anymore. Um, used to be lots of tight ends, right? Because um, a lot of the time they get one, 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 right? Does their squ- their stat line like one catch yeah. for one yard for yeah. one touchdown? <laughs> kind of just just uh, vulture you that way. Um, well, like looking at Jamal Williams' stat line last week, it was sixty four rushing yards, no receiving yards, no catches, but he got three rushing touchdowns, so he put up twenty four points. Like, yeah. come on, like. Like that is so freaking tilting to me, but it's the the Garrett Blount role, man. <laughs> it is. It's just, and he was a great play, and that that year tilted me too. I'm like, this guy mm-hmm. sucks. He gets no rushing 
but he'll put up 15 to 20 points every uh, week because they stick him in, in the goal line and he's able to break through on a regular basis. Now, yeah, to your I, point, uh, I think up until the, I'm sorry, go ahead, JJ. Finish. No, 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 no. I actually think Williams is like a bit underused, right? I think he's a good grinder. I think they need to grind more over there as, you know, well, pause they're at on a, that. But <laughs> yeah. they're at a three headed committee right now with, I don't know why they're playing Justin Jackson, but uh, yeah, it's Justin Jackson, Jamal Williams, and DeAndre Swift. And it's just, None of them are really good enough to to score high to win, except if Jamal Williams gets three goal line touchdowns. So, all right, gentlemen, thanks very much for all that. We can go ahead and transition into our bankroll challenge segment. Uh, it's a weekly segment we like to do to kind of showcase that you don't necessarily need a, a, a bunch of uh, a bunch of money, or you don't need to be a rainmaker's whale to to have success or have fun. With Rainmakers, we started with a $50 bankroll, and we've been kind of grinding out the season week to week and have cashed essentially every week to this point, making some adjustments along the way. Um, Derek, did you want to go ahead and lead into kind of what we're thinking with our current lineup, some adjustments we're going to make, and 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 how we're going to approach it moving forward? Yeah, so this week's really split since it's Thanksgiving, and so we're not really going to be able to play without selling half of our team. And after discussing it, we kind of want to readjust and focus our team on playoff bound players so that we can keep playing it after the regular season ends. And so I think the plan right now is to sell off most of the team, if not all of it, and uh, build a uh, playoff bound team uh, and ride that for the rest rest of the season. Um We've been adjusting around and we've been making little by little, but eventually it's going to get to the point where we just can't play the cards anymore. And so the strategy going forward is to find basically the cheap, cheapest stack that could go decently into the playoffs and uh, are playing all playing on the main slate from here until the end of the season. And then uh, and then we should be good to, to ride it and hopefully make some profit from it. Yeah, I love that. And, and currently our bankroll sits at what again? Uh, right now we are at, uh, before we sell off, we are at $21. So, uh, we should have about 40 to $50, uh, once we sell everything off, depending on the prices and everything like that. But perfect with, with a Marquise Brown an injured Marquise Brown yes, on the and, sidelines. And we do have a Marquise Brown to toss in, uh, for, uh, but who should be back. If not this week, he'll definitely be back next week. So. Yeah, looking forward to see how we can kind of adjust and maybe finish in a top 25, top 20 range, you know, as we kind of close out the season here. Jake, JJ, did you guys have any thoughts here? Moving right along? No, I mean, it uh, looks good. Um, I know we have um, Tyreek Hill as our superstar um, in, in this lineup going forward, and probably if we can get to Tua, like, that sets us up pretty well with Lockett, Tua, yeah. um, Hill for playoff band team. And so agree with the strategy here. Moving right along into the close of the show here, another weekly segment we like to do just to kind of keep the G- D-Gen juices flowing right along is our weekly pack rip uh, of varying tiers. This week, we're going to roll out a rare pack. Uh, Mr. Jake, did you want to go ahead and do the honors and see if we can hit it big? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, unfortunately, uh, for this rare pack, there's no... Um, oh, I'm in the wrong spot. But there's no uh, ability to to win more than just a rare in this one. That's all I got. Uh, but hey, maybe we'll get a good player. We'll see. So let's get it going. Let's good luck. Go. Good luck. I'm feeling it. It's getting a little warm in here. That's right. <laughs> Give it to us. Oh, it's a rare. Oh shit! Let's go. <laughs> Uh, uh, Juju, hey, hey. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. We'll, we will take Juju. That's really good. Yeah, that's, that's actually really good. Your best hit on stream. <laughs> 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 we'll definitely Juju. take Juju. He is he's playable. He's he's come on strong. You know, uh, you know, once he gets back healthy and stuff. But he's had a nice yeah. nice run recent week. So maybe uh, maybe one more week out with the concussion, but he should be back after that. Mm-hmm. Pick and, up, uh, pick up, and right obviously he's going to be the top receiving off it, option for Patrick Mahomes. So it's going to be really good. Tony, Never. Tony <laughs> injured again, you know, death taxes and Tony yeah. questionable. Yeah. 
<laughs> is it a hamstring again? Is yeah, that what popped up on him? Yeah. Don't Shoot. worry. It's yeah. Justin Watson season now. It's going to mm. be exciting. Yeah, hey, I feel that. You know, hey, that, that Casey's just another offense where they like to spread it out. Yeah. But that's why it was nice seeing some funnels going uh, um, Juju's way because it seemed it's always nice when Mahomes can kind of lock on to someone else outside of Kelsey. You know, so. Um, well, awesome. We will take Juju to the bank with us and close out the show appropriately there. And thank you for the pack up there, Mr. Jake. Uh, as always, thank you to everyone watching another episode of Make It Rain here. Always enjoy doing the show uh, with you guys and with everyone watching. Feel free to go ahead and comment, like, subscribe on all of our socials here below. Uh, we also upload the show as a podcast. So if, if you don't have time to watch it as a video, uh, feel free to check us out. All of our links will be in the description down below. Uh, so make sure you check us out there if you want to tune in from an audio only production standpoint other than that also think about joining us here in mvhq we have a lively thread of rainmakers and and dfs action i know uh some of the nft stuff has been a little bit slower always packed pockets of activity throughout the landscape of uh crypto and web3 and nfts and rainmakers and dfs whatever it may be so we're always chatting we're always talking we're always trying to find edges inside mvhq feel think about joining us uh, along the way we'd love to have you our links will also be in the description there on that note good luck to everyone and let's make it rain